Hi, I'm Rob Ramirez. I'm one of the cycling engineers, and I'd like to show you a little bit about what we've got planned for Jitter, some of the new features. On the screen here, there's a JitGL camera object, which is a new object that allows you to uh, move and position and rotate the camera um, without having to go through the uh, GL render messages like you had to in the past. A uh, very cool feature is the ability to define um, an area of the screen called a viewport that the uh, camera is going to render to. And you can, of course, have multiple cameras, which is pretty cool. So here we're setting up a uh, front side top view. And as you can see, this camera uh, is positioned and oriented separately from the others. Um, you can also define attributes that the camera will override. Um, so here we're overriding poly mode um, for all the, the other camera views. So now we have uh, four different, view, different viewports with different backgrounds and different properties of the objects defined. And this was something that was very hard to do, if not impossible, when, when in Max 5 you had to use GL Sketch and um, lots of commands like that. Um, but here we have uh, just a few simple objects, a few simple attributes, and we have this um, four quad view set up. Another uh, great new object that we've added is the JitGL Lite object. And again, this is something that you could do with GL Sketch in Max 5, but it was uh, quite difficult. And it's made much easier with Max 6. Um, we can define different light types. Here's a point light um, and a spotlight, which allows us to really get some nice lighting effects um, and adjust. Uh, to highlight certain parts of the scene much easier than we could in the past. So here we're going to define a spotlight and really highlight one of the mushrooms. And of course lights are dynamic. Um, here we have a light that's uh, moving through the objects here. Um, we can add lights and remove them. So we're adding a red light and a blue light. And of course the light color can be changed dynamically. Lots of fun things you can do with these new light objects. One of the uh, most exciting uh, new features of Max 6 and Jitter is the uh, material generator object. In the past, if you wanted to create a material for a 3D object, um, it was a very cumbersome process of writing a shader, and anytime you made any changes to the scene, you had to go back and modify the shader. Uh, the material object handles all of that stuff automatically. Lights can be added and removed. Textures can be set, and we have some built-in properties to set different types of materials. For instance, here we're creating a tune material for the mushrooms. And the really nice feature is this built-in material browser that you can open by just double-clicking on a GL material object and find uh, some built-in materials, um, and then you can modify those. So we're going to put in a um, bump map here on this material. And when we close the browser, it'll um, automatically set the object that the uh, material is bound to. All right, let's take a look at the JitGL model object, which has gone, undergone a major overhaul and now supports uh, many different uh, model file types. And these are just some of them. The Blender model type, uh, this is a uh, motion capture biovision um, this is a Collada file, and of course uh, a lot of these files have animation data and we can support that. Um, so we can enable animations, um, you can adjust the rate, you can adjust the time of the animations, um, all kinds of things like that. We can see the uh, skeleton data that's embedded in the file that's causing the animation. Uh, many different things to the materials in the file. You can get a description of them and then adjust them. Uh, you can change the type of a material that it is. So here we've turned him into a tune material which actually looks better for him. You can also tell the object to um, create a structure of all the nodes in the model um, and create anim node objects um, that mimics that structure allowing you to paste them into your patch and then actually manipulate them. 
here we can actually connect a anim drive to the hip um, tell the hip object to disable um, its animations and then control it with the uh, anim drive objects if I turn off the uh, models animations you can see the manual control All right, now we're going to take a look at an exciting new set of objects called the JIT.Phys objects. This is a physics simulation, and we have a physics world that um, encapsulates the physics context, and you can add uh, what are called rigid bodies to that world. So we're going to turn the mass on, and we've added a sphere rigid body to this world. Um, we have a GL object that will um, allow us to draw the um, objects that are in the world including the bounds of the world which um, you can turn on and off to uh, en enable and disable um, these default world bounds and you can also send a matrix of points and create your own custom um, collision object um, you can uh, there's a fizz.picker object that allows you to click on the scene and um, you, you can throw the bodies around. You can also get um, the bodies that are colliding and use um, and do whatever you want with that. So in this case we're just sending an impulse to the body that the mouse is hovering over. Um, as well we have um, collision reporting coming out of the phys.world as um, some dictionaries. So here we're just going to use those um, the position value of those collisions and draw a simple uh, sphere wherever the um, objects are colliding. Uh, we also have an object called the jit.phys.multiple that works very similar to um, jit.gl.multiple. You send in matrices and it will actually create several bodies um, according to the matrix that you send. So we can connect our GL multiple to our grid shape and now you've drawn a bunch of uh, balls. Uh, lots of thought went into Max 6 with how to just make the process of patching um, easier. So uh, what we have done is uh, remove the requirement to provide a context name and objects are now implicitly added to um, uh, the context that they can find in the existing patch that they're in. So all these GL objects here don't require a context name and they're just added to the one that they find. Um, as well, we've added the ability to set attributes of objects by just connecting patch cords. So here we're setting the um, draw to of the grid shape to the node, and we're setting the material attribute to the GL material. The GL handle is also reworked to make it much easier to use. Um, it has a, a property now where it's not when when it's not connected to any object, it is in auto handle mode which will allow you to just hover over objects um, to uh, manipulate the uh, position and rotation of them. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the JITGL node object, which gives us the ability to group objects, um, OpenGL objects, and uh, apply transformations and um, set uh, attributes on the whole group. Um, things that you used to have to use the sketch object for and were quite cumbersome in Max 5 are, are much easier now. Um, so we can take um, a group of objects and create another group here and position them apart from each other, um, rotate them as a group separately, uh, apply a material, and here we have these two groups of objects. The other thing you can do is um, enable the capture attribute and capture um, all the objects in that group to a texture, uh, process that texture with a slab um, using the JITGL node object.